Hi everybody, I am here today to talk to you a little bit about how to make a bug jar. I thought this would be a really fun project for spring. It's one of um, the projects I usually do as second graders, but since we're not all together, I thought this could be a great lesson for everybody to do. So I need you to get out a few things for me. I need you to get out your markers, if you have some, or watercolor. I want you to get a Sharpie or a crayon, water, a paintbrush, scissors, and you're going to need glue. And if you want to, I'm going to show you a neat way to make your background using a coffee filter. So if you have coffee filters at home, this is a great way. Um, to make some tissue paper. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in a few minutes. I brought some books home with me and I thought maybe you could take a look at um, some of the pictures in them because we're gonna be creating our own bugs. So this would be a good time for you to look at different bugs um, on the internet and you can, you can Google in simple bug drawings and they'll show you how to draw simple bug drawings. So you don't have to do something, oops, this guy's upside down. You don't have to do things that are really complex, and I'm gonna show you how to put this together in a little bit. Um, I have this really beautiful book called A Butterfly Is Patient. And inside, look at this cover of all of these little caterpillars that turn into butterfly, because this is about a butterfly being patient. And it's, this has got beautiful drawings with lots of lots of different butterflies that are in here. And I thought that this was a really fun book to look at, to give me some ideas about what kind of butterflies I might want to put, look at these beautiful ones, into my bug jar. But here's the interesting thing. Our bugs in our bug jar are not going to be colored. And the reason why is if we made our bugs colored and our background colored, we would not see our bugs. So when you make your bugs, they're just going to be on black and white. Now, you can make this bug jar in your sketchbook if you want to. Um, here's my sketchbook, let me grab it. So I finished coloring my sketchbook. I hope yours looks something like this. Remember, I didn't leave any white unless it was supposed to be there. So hopefully you've colored your sketchbook. Um, and inside my sketchbook, I have some of the artwork that I had done earlier. So I've done my... Um, Claire Young Lions, and I have some other things in here. But if you wanted to do your bug drawing, your bug jar inside of here, that would be fine. What you're going to need if you do that is a separate sheet of paper, and you can use copy paper to draw your bugs on, okay? Now, I'm using a separate sheet of paper, so I'm gonna show you how I did that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, you're gonna see in front of you, I have three different jars that I did. And I'm going to show you the differences between them. This, I'm going to show you the one in the middle first. This one right here is done with watercolors. Now, I did the wet on wet method, which means I put water on my paper first, and then I take my color and I add it to it so that it gives it that um, bleeding effect. We want our colors to all blend. We don't want it to be really, really stuck together tight. We really want to color in and let those colors blend. So for that reason, I also am going to choose colors that are friends with each other. So I started off here with cool colors, but I know that blue and green are friends. And I know that because green and yellow are next to each other on the color wheel, they can be friends too. And those can bleed together. Yellow is friends with red, red and orange. Red's friends with blue. So we get a little bit of purple. And so this is how I chose to do that. I also know that blue and yellow make green. So if I know two colors make another color, I can add them next to each other. Okay, so that's what I did. I used just a watercolor palette to do that one. Okay, so that's choice number one that you can do for your background for your bug jar. Another choice for your bug jar is just to take your markers, like, like I've showed you in other videos, to take your markers and just color, 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 and then use your water and your paintbrush. Ooh, these are brand new markers, so getting my lid on was kind of hard. Look at these, I'm just gonna take a tangent. Look at these beautiful colors. Aren't those fun? I don't think I've ever had that many colors before. I got those as, a, as my birthday present. Okay, back to our bug jar. So if I were to take my, my marker, like I did, and I color, 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 color on it, and then I take my, um, I have a dirty paintbrush, take my paintbrush, 
and I paint over it, it's going to take that color and it's going to spread it all out. So this one right here was done with markers. All right. So this is choice number two. So choice number one, I used watercolor palette. Choice number two, I used markers. Okay. And I'm going to show you the third choice. And I think this is really fun because it's a different way of doing things that we haven't done before. So I thought I would show you. I learned this from um, a teacher on Instagram. Her name is Art with Mrs. E. And she was showing how to do some things at home. And she did this with an Elmer the Elephant, which my kindergartners have done. But I thought it would be really fun to do with a bug jar. Um, and it, it's kind of what we call bleeding tissue paper. So at school, we have something called bleeding tissue paper. It's just tissue paper that when you put water on it, it makes, it turns it into this kind of pattern. Um, but today I'm going to show you how to do it with a coffee filter. So again, you're going to take your markers and you're going to just color parts of your coffee filter. Now, I don't drink coffee at home, so I bought these. Actually, it's for when I have guests come, but now my brother's the only one, so he doesn't get any more because I'm using them for art. But you can get these at the dollar store. Super inexpensive. You can get a whole bunch of them and they work really, really well. So when I'm doing this, I'm just coloring. I'm actually going to put colors that are friends with each other next to one another um, because of the way I'm going to do this. You can see on here how it, when you lay it, what happens is I'm going to lay it down on top of it. Let me show you a piece. So I colored this and I lay it down on top and I'm going to get it wet. Now, when I lift it up, I get this, but also I get this beautiful paper that I can use for another project. So I keep it in a Ziploc baggie so I can come back to it at another time. All right. So I'm just going to do these three. Maybe I'll put some lime green in here because lime green always looks really, oops, not on my bug jar. It'll leak through. So I have a messy mat underneath me. If you have any old pieces of cardboard or um, like the inside of a box of water cans or something like that, you can um, cut it open and use it as your messy mat. Okay. So now I have these, I'm going to cut these open. So I'm just showing you how to make your own bleeding tissue paper and I would color the whole thing and you can cut this into pieces or you can leave it into one. It's totally up to you. And then what you would do, I'm going to do it on a scrap piece of paper here. You would take your tissue, you take your coffee filter and I'm just going to get my background a little bit wet so it sticks. Okay. This is the wet on wet technique again. And then I'm just going to take my water and my paintbrush and I'm going to paint over it. And you're going to notice as you start painting, look at, you can see that starts bleeding. See how that does that? That's what we want. Now you can leave this and let it dry. Or if you want to, you can lift it up and move it to another spot. Now those colors aren't super good friends, so I don't want to blend them too much together. So I just didn't want to get all that color in there and make sure I've pressed it down really hard because if I don't, I'll get these little white bubbles that I have here. So if I pick it up now, there, you're going to see my color and I can move it over here and lay it down again and I can pick this one up. Ooh, that one's pretty. See that turquoise and lime look really good together and I can move it over here. So this is a great way to make background paper. I've shown you a lot of different pieces of art on the videos that show you how to draw pictures and then do some kind of background. So a shaving cream background, a shaving cream background would work for this too, but you could do a shaving cream background. You can do the marker background. You can do the watercolor background. These are all great ways to make backgrounds just using some simple things that we have at home. So I just wanted to show you that this was how I made this. Now I would let this dry obviously before I did anything more. And you can make your jar first if you want to, and then your background, or you can make your, if you already have paper made, and you can just draw your jar on there. So I'm gonna move this out of my way to the side. I'm gonna save this and um, show you how to do the jars now, okay? Don't throw away that tissue because it works really well for other things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, now that I've shown you how to make different backgrounds, we're gonna go ahead and get started doing our jar, all right? So what I'd like everybody to do is to get a clean piece of paper or open up your sketchbooks and we'll go ahead and do that in there. I'm just going to get a clean piece of paper because that's easier for me to show you. Can you see that? My camera at home works a little bit differently than my camera at school. So 
One of the things is that my microphone is in a weird place on the camera at school, I mean the camera at home, so I have, sorry if that's a little bit too close for you. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make the jar the very first thing, and I want you to think about the shape that you want your jar to be. You don't have to have a jar that looks just like mine. It can be a little bit bigger or smaller, but remember, you wanna be able to draw those bugs to fit inside. Um, this one is narrower, you can see I made it narrower, and this one is wider. So you just wanna think about how you want that jar to look when you're making it, okay? All right, we're gonna start, if you look at the top of my paper, I'm gonna give myself a couple finger widths at the top, but nothing more than that. That way I really wanna use all my paper that I have on here. So the first step that I'm gonna do for my top of my jar is I'm gonna draw these two little curves. Okay, now these two little curves are going to become this part of my jar up here, okay? So I'm going to just start with those two little curves, one on this side and one on this side. And then I'm gonna draw a line that connects them. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes across and connects those two. And I'm gonna draw another line across that connects those. So this is the top, the lid of my jar. Now, your, maybe your curve was wider, so you're gonna have a thicker lid. That's absolutely great. Right, now I'm going to take, go from this part, I'm going to look at the bottom of my paper and I wanna bring down a curve, which is gonna be the edge of my jar, almost to the bottom of my paper, okay? So I'm gonna come down, almost to the bottom, and I'm gonna stop right there. And what I really wanna to try to do is do the same on the other side. Now there's gonna be some of you who wanna do this in pencil first. I know who you are, you do that, okay. Now that I have those two sides, I'm gonna do another one. When I connect it this time, I'm gonna give it a curve. You see how it almost went to the very bottom of my paper? So I gave it a curve on there. Now I have to go make my jar look like it's three-dimensional. In order to do that, I'm gonna give it a line across here. So it's almost a very slight rainbow. It makes it look like the bottom of the jar is curved and that it's sitting on something. I'm also gonna go back up to the top of my jar. I'm gonna do the same thing up here and give it a curve, okay? That makes the jar look like it has a lid on it. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm just gonna give it myself some lines. And I, I curve mine a little bit and then as I get to the center, they get straight. Okay, that's pretty easy. That's my jar. Now, if I'm going to cut it out, I can draw my bugs here and then I don't waste any paper. If I'm not cutting it out, then I wanna get another sheet of paper, like a piece of paper from the um, printer, and I'm gonna draw my bugs on that piece of paper, okay? So now is when I would go ahead, I'm not even gonna cut it out yet. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what kind of background I wanna do for my bug jar. So I showed you how to do the coffee filter bug background. So remember, that's when you took this filter and you colored it and then you cut it into pieces and you laid it down on it, painted it, and when you lift it up, it looks like this. So this is all from a coffee filter, okay? This one I showed you is watercolor. That's this one. So this is gonna give you a pale color. Although you could do coffee filter and you could choose like pinks and light greens and light purples and it would look like this too if you wanted to. Okay, that's up to you. But right now I'm gonna show you how to do the marker one because this is something we all have at home. So I'm gonna make sure I show you how to do that. So the first thing I would do is just start picking out colors that I really like. So if I, this one you can tell I did all warm colors. Um, you don't have to do that but you're gonna just go ahead and take your marker and start coloring in some spaces. And I'm gonna do more than just one spot with my marker. And that's just because I don't have to keep taking my lid off and on. I don't have to be super duper perfect about my coloring. Um, I don't have to be careful that I'm not leaving any white spots. The really fun part about getting these new markers is I have 40 colors to choose from. How oh, fantastic, that's a very bright yellow. So I hope you guys are um, all having fun doing your homework at school and chatting with your teachers online. I know it's not the same as being at school. Can maybe get a little bit of lonely sometimes. So hopefully you're able to meet up with your classmates and your teacher online and visit with them. Okay, so I'm putting some colors on here. Maybe I'll put a little bit of blue. We'll see what this is gonna look like. 
And then I can start deciding if I want other colors on here. Probably need some warm, a warmer pink or something. Blue, we'll see what this ends up looking like. So as you go through, again, you're just gonna just add those colors. You don't have to fill up all the spaces, but you do wanna get enough colors on there that you can blend those colors around, okay? So now if I take um, my paintbrush, I can go ahead now and start adding in my water. So you see how I've done that all over? Now it's gonna look different from this one. This one only has three colors on it. So I just use those over and over. This one, look at all those. There's so many, and this was fun because I could layer them on top of each other. And the really neat thing about this is even if my, um, like this one right here, even if it's dry, I can still take a wet one and go back over it again if I felt like I didn't have enough color on there. So remember this is one I showed you how I made earlier. I could go back and add more and see how it adds just a little bit faintly there. So you can continue doing that over even when this is dry. Okay, so, oh, I forgot that orange and green do not like each other. So that was probably not good to put them next to each other. I'm gonna learn, huh? So I would just go through and I'm gonna paint up my background and spread it. Remember, the more water I get on there, I can spread it around and really get those colors moving around on my, on my bug jar, okay? All right, I'm gonna put this to the side for a minute. I'm gonna show you how to start working on those bugs. So once my jar is dry, I can go ahead and take my scissors and I can cut my jar out so that my jar is like this. Oh, I forgot to show you my lid. I just used the gray um, marker at the top and went across my lid to turn it gray. So I actually just did one line like this. Oh, I think I went like this too. And then my, don't, don't be afraid to change your water out too. If your water starts getting a little dirty, go change it. So if you had already cut your, your um, bug jar out, then you could go ahead and just move on. I didn't cut mine out yet. So I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll come back. And I would, obviously, I'm gonna paint the whole entire thing. But for time's sake, I'm gonna show you how to do your bugs. Okay, so this is your jar and I cut my bug jar out. I have some extra paper. So I'm just gonna take some of those, um, extra pieces of paper, there's my jar. I'm just gonna use the sides of this to draw some different bugs. So let's draw some bugs. Now, when I cut my bugs out, you might wanna have a little bit of help doing that. Cause I did, oh, that guy's missing a, two legs. That's too bad for him. Um, I cut really close to my edges. So if you want help, you can ask for help to cut out your edges, okay? So when I draw my bugs, I'm just gonna start by drawing really simple middles. So for instance, if I wanted to draw some type of like dragonfly, I'm gonna make it in three parts. And then I would go ahead and give it a really big wing on top. And then a smaller wing on the bottom. Okay. And then I could just decorate it. Now I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not coloring it in black. I'm really just leaving it so we have the outline of this. Um, because what will happen is then it makes it pop, that famous word pop off of our paper. I come down here and I do a ladybug. I mean, ladybug, a butterfly. This is not a ladybug. Silly me. And I'm just gonna draw a lot of bugs, okay? So you're gonna get all of those drawn in here and just turn your paper around and around and around. Oh, I did a snail earlier. Let me show you how to do that. Hopefully when you're at home with your families, they're all being quiet and letting you do your work and not coming in while you're in the middle of doing an art lesson to try to get into the refrigerator. Okay, so yes, that might be happening at my house right now. So if you are drawing, see there's my little snail and I did um, a lightning bug and you could do a ladybug and you could, I thought I had one, but maybe I lost him. Okay, so 
you're gonna go ahead and draw all those bugs using that extra paper and you're gonna cut them out. So I have big scissors, maybe you have little scissors. Maybe you need um, a big sister or brother or a mom or um, dad to help you cut those out, but you get those cut out, okay? So now you have a jar that's dry and you have some bugs to go in your bug jar right here. Now before, I put my bugs in my bug jar, I need to do some fun stuff to add to my picture. Now remember when we made, uh, this is my extra piece of paper, which I'm gonna save because this, remember I talk about painted paper sometimes? This is painted paper, oh, at its finest. So I was just thinking as I was sitting here, um, I need a branch to go in my bug jar because I want a branch to go across here. And I don't want just a regular white branch. That's not very fun. So I was thinking I need to make myself a brown branch. And how great would it be is if it was made with this kind of paper. So I'm gonna really quickly show you how I can make a branch and some leaves to add on. Now I told you I got those new markers and they are fantastic because I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of different colors. They are, look at how many there are. Oh my gosh, so many great colors. So that was a pretty fun present. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over right here. I'm gonna lay this on top of it. Remember I like to get it a little bit wet first. My coffee filter will stick on top of it. And then I'm gonna just sit here and paint that on top. Right? So I'm really getting that in there. And that's gonna make my wood look more realistic. Ooh, even if my paper gets a little bit of wrinkles in it, that always works really well, just so you know, if you get wrinkles in your coffee filter. So then I can peel this off and I can move it to another location on my paper if I want to. Or I can just leave it on there and let it dry. Sometimes when I do that, it gets even darker colors on it. But because I'm in a hurry and I wanna show you how to do this, I'm gonna use it wet. Oops, let's get some more paint on there. Press that down. It turns your fingers colors, but they wash off. Okay, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna let this dry because this would be great painted paper to use later on. Throw it over here. So now I wanna make a branch so that my bug can crawl on it. Maybe my snail or my if I made a ladybug and I'm just gonna cut a really, you wanna let yours dry. Don't be like me. Let yours dry off first. So I might go ahead and if you're a third grader, you'll remember that we did this last year and you're gonna be an expert at making this. Maybe you have a younger brother or sister and you can help them and show them how to do it. Okay, so I just also cut these little pieces off right here. And I'm gonna put them in so they're just like uh, their other branches on my little stick, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my bugs in. So I have this guy, maybe he is more, well, he doesn't look like a spider. Oh, I did give him eight legs like a spider. Here's one of the legs. I don't know where the other one is. But if I wanted to, and he wanted to be a spider, I could draw a line from him here and he would probably be hanging the other direction, wouldn't he? Like that. So I could do something like that. Um, my little butterfly could be flying around. My lightning bug. My snail, or if I had a ladybug, they could be climbing up my stick. And then what I wanted you to do is make some leaves. So I was gonna use some of my coffee filter paper from um, the other day when I first made one of these. And I was gonna, I cut out a leaf shape like this, okay? So then I could go ahead and glue on some leaves to give another dimension to my um, bug jar. But if I wanted to, I could also just get construction paper and make leaves from colored construction paper, or I could go ahead and make leaves from um, any kind of scrap paper I might have. So maybe I took my tissue paper and made more paper like I did here, and I would cut out a leaf shape here. Now, 
I don't, if you want to draw your leaf on the back, you can. I, I'm going to show you how I cut mine without drawing. I start here and I make a rounded edge. Like the edge of a rainbow. It's a really stretched out rainbow. And then I do the same thing on the other side. Really stretched out rainbow. And then I have a leaf. So I can come here and now I have a couple of leaves. I would probably want to add more. And then the last step is I'm going to get my glue and do dot, dot, not a lot and a dot behind each of my pieces so it's all glued down. Now if I did it on a separate sheet of paper, I can glue this into my sketchbook now. Oh, there's my other leaf. I can glue this onto my sketchbook or I can, oops, um, or if I did it in my sketchbook, it's already there, but I want to leave it open and make sure it dries really well before I close my sketchbook so that the glue does not put my sketchbook um, stuck together. Okay. All right, everyone. I hope you had fun and I look forward to coming back and doing more art with you. Remember, maybe save your art till the end of the day. Try to get all your homework done first and save art as that special treat for you at the end of the day when you really want to do something fun and different from your schoolwork. Um, you can join me too. I'm going to be doing some more reading of stories online. So if you want to, um, listen to me read online, you can. All right. Have a great day, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again soon.